Thank you. Thank you to the Press Found National Press Foundation. Uh, first, I'd like to thank my beautiful and extraordinary wife, Sarah Stevens. I, I really need to thank uh, Marty Tolchin, who uh, first pulled me on board the, uh, at the launch of the good ship Politico. Uh, nobody told me back then that this uh, ship was a rocket ship, and uh, the last four years have been an amazing ride. And um, that's all thanks to our bold captains, John Harris and Jim Vandehei, as uh, who's over there. As Charlie Sheen would put it, these guys are amazing. You just can't process them with a normal brain. <laughs> Thanks also to the rest of the crew, all the great editors, the writers, the bloggers, the designers I'm lucky to work with every day, as well as the good folks upstairs at Albert and Communications who made this all possible. Um, most of all, I'd like to thank all the politicians and the pundits of this town who make this, the work of the cartoonist so easy. For example, let's look back over this last year. I have a few cartoons to show you. This, uh, first one up, please. This, it was a year of many surprises. As Obama entered his second year, he learned that this change thing was all about managing expectations. Uh, Next one, please. Um, the administration also learned that changing the behavior of allies wasn't as easy as they had hoped. That's Karzai, and he's handing Michelle and Obama some poppies. Uh, early in 2010, Obama learned change can come from all sides. The election of Senator Scott Brown reminded us why they're called swing voters. So that's 2008, 2009, 2010 with a cartoon bonk. Um, the mood swings of the voters culminated in the historic midterms and the great tsunami of red state ink that washed over and rearranged the political map. With that great red wave, the reign of our first woman speaker gave way to our first orange speaker. <laughs> this is, um, Pelosi is saying to the new speaker, ashtrays, you know you can't smoke in the house. And a new speaker saying they're not for smoking and burning in the ashtray is the democratic agenda. Meanwhile, our increasingly tribal media settled into their respective caricature of the president. This one I'm going to have to read. This is uh, media caricature dolls, little paper cutouts. It reads, dress up Obama in your favorite historical analogy. For MSNBC viewers, he's Abe Obama. For PBS viewers, he's Franklin Delano Obama. And for Fox viewers, Mao Obama. <laughs> if we had any slow news days, we could always check in on the goings on in Palin land. More than a politician, more than a TV star, she's a perpetual commotion machine. And everybody in the media appreciates that. Uh, while we're on the media, uh, this year we saw Ariana go to AOL, Rupert Murdoch go to the iPad, which left a lot of traditional journalists wondering where they were going, perhaps to an exhibit at the museum. This is a diorama of news gatherers in the pre-Twitter era, and the mom is reading the sign saying, that's amazing, they checked their facts, and even had editors. And the little boy in the foreground, is, he's on a device of some sort, and he's saying, what's an editor? What's a fact? <laughs> in local media news, we had the owner of the Redskins suing the city paper for their callous disregard for the feelings of ethnic groups. <laughs> they, And, uh, and finally, back to Obama and the greatly changed political landscape. He found himself triangulating his way back to the 90s. This is Axelrod reading a paper that says, Obama steps up with more Clinton aides. And, and, and X says to Obama, is that making us look overly Clintonian? And Obama replies, depends what the definition of is is. 
So that's what I've got from last year. We are, as the Chinese curse goes, living in very interesting times, and um, I'm sure that that will give you all a lot to report on and us all a lot to cartoon on. Thank you very much.